Alrighty, so we're doing a staple on the channel. I've been doing this one for years. I think since, what, MLB 18? I did it on 19. 18, I think I did like a series on it. I did it in 19 with the series. This is the zero overall rebuild. We're talking about every single player, zero overall. This one's gonna be a challenge. How are we gonna win games? I don't really know. We're gonna figure out a way to do it though. So I hope you do enjoy the video. And if you do, hit that thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and enjoyed the content. And like I've been saying, there's like 60% of you that still haven't hit that subscribe button. Yeah, I'm looking at you right now. Hit that button. All right, so today in the comment section, I want you to give me your rebuild challenges. I'm talking like some good challenges that actually is gonna, you know, make me work a little bit in a video because I really wanna add some new challenges, some new, some new types of rebuilds. So if you guys got any, let me know in the comment section down below. So with that kind of being said, if you also have some rosters that you guys think of, like if you guys have a, everyone goes back to the team that they were drafted by, or if you have any sort of rosters that you make or anything like that, let me know in the comment section down below as well. I'm looking for new rosters. I'm looking for challenges. So that's why I'm saying, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you guys see an idea that you like, hit that thumbs up button on the comment so that I know that you guys enjoy that idea. So here we go. If you did miss last video, top corner, go and give it a watch. It was a Braves rebuild. The team we built was insane. You guys got to watch it. It's in this corner. All social media links down and below, down, down. They're down there. Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, all that good stuff. Twitch, Twitch, go and follow it. Sunday, Sunday afternoon, we're doing a viewers draft my team. It's going to be a fantasy draft. You guys are going to pick the players. You guys are going to pick the trades, free agency signings, all that good stuff. Go follow the Twitch so you're notified when I do go live. All right, guys, no more shenanigans. Let's hop into this rebuild. Zero overall is going to be a tough one. So I don't really have like a window on like how quickly I'm gonna try to turn this turn this team around, but you guys are about to see here in a second. This is this is gonna be some real tough work. Like it's it's gonna be tough. And you're probably thinking, well, you got a minor league system, or you got you know you got an organization below you. Yeah, just your MLB team zero overall. Ha <laughs> ha. No, every single player in the organization is zero overall. I have no farm system. I have nothing to work with. No trades are going to be made. Every single player is F potential. How are we going to do this? I have no idea. I think the real thing is we're going to have to try to find players that has some decent trade value so that we can like kind of trade them, see if we can get something in return. So it's going to be tough. Like I said, Everybody's zero overall. There is not a single good player on this team. This challenge might break me. This might be the one where I'm like, I can't do any more rebuilds, guys. This is this is this is it. My mind's gone. So really, the main way we're gonna turn this team around is through free agents. And I'm looking at some of these players, and I'm thinking, one, we either keep them and kind of slowly build around them, or we pick them up and we hold on to them for a season and then trade them because you're not allowed to sign somebody and then trade them right away in MLB The Show. So let's go pick up a couple free agents. So realistically, whoever we sign really won't be staying with the team, nor will they be kind of like a long-term solution or they're gonna help us out in season one anyways. So me going to free agency, signing up the whole like pool of free agents won't help us out because a lot of them are older players who don't really hold their value. And I mean, we could go down here and try to find players that have B potential or, you know, kind of glitchy in here and there but I'm probably not gonna keep them and I most likely would be able to sign them in free agency after this season anyways. So what I decided to do was pick up a couple players that do have a little bit of trade value in Hernandez, Josh Fields, Henderson Alvarez, and Vicente Campos. Both these pitchers have beat potential. So these are kind of guys that actually have some trade value who we could potentially get some really good pitchers or other players in return. Same with Hernandez and Fields. And then the two players I went with for the lineup were Devin Travis and Yasiel Puig. Both of them be potential kind of higher rated players who I definitely could trade at the deadline who are going to give us other players in return. Budget sitting around a million where I like to usually sit. But I think with this one, we're going to have to spend a lot of money because I expect a whole lot of players to retire after this season. The main focus really is going to try to find some really good players in the draft who can hop into the team day one. But we're going to have to see how this goes. So for this one, I'm going to go draft day for season one. Then I'm going to go trade deadline for season one because I want to make some moves to help us out for the like coming seasons. So let's go do this. Let's get into draft day. All right, let's hop into this review of the draft picks. I almost said let's hop into this draft, but that's not what we're doing. We're hopping into the review of the, the draft. Really, the thing is a lot of good players were in this draft, but most of them were closing pitchers. They were like six blue chip prospects that were all closing pitchers i decided to go with someone a little bit different though i decided to go with a first baseman 
who actually looks like he's gonna be really good. Antonio Incarnacion, in in car yeah Incarnacion. What am I? What, what what's wrong with me? Yeah, maybe I went with him for his first name, but look at his fielding, his reactions, hitting stats look really good. I think this guy, you know, season two, season three potentially could be our first baseman. Went with a couple pitchers as well. We got Abraham Blocker and then Johnny Gutu. What a name, Johnny Gutu. We got Scotty Pinero, who actually looks like a decent little center fielder, like fielding wise. Hitting wise, pretty bad, but we'll, we'll work around it. We've got Horacio, Horatio, Horacio, Horatio Whitehead, and Damian Baladeris. So, a couple decent picks. I actually look forward to possibly getting some of these guys in the squad, but there we go. There's the draft. So as expected, season not going great. I do want to make these trades though at the deadline. We've only won four games, which is expected. Like things aren't going fantastic. So Devin Travis, 251, gonna trade him 100%. Same with Puig. They're just two guys that have value in the team. Let's get something in return. And Henderson Alvarez normally is a really good pitcher. So I want to keep him, but we need players. So let's try to get some new ones. Same with Vicente Campos. Vicente Campos is actually kind of bad, but we're gonna trade him anyways. David Hernandez, Josh Fields, also going to be traded. Josh Fields somehow is like putting up a good year. That's unbelievable, but he probably doesn't get that. He's pitched 92 innings, and he's he has those numbers. That's kind of crazy to think about. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look through the trade block, see if there's any good names there. So I guess we could do that. See if there's any good names that have like small, really friendly contracts that we could, you know, pick up and then possibly trade in the future or just keep on the team. You know, players like Jonathan Holder, really solid. Um, realistically, I'd want to try to find a team that'd be willing to give me multiple players for just the one guy that I'm going to trade. So let me see what kind of magic I can, you know, kind of brew up. So normally I don't like to trade within the division, but with this one, I feel like we just kind of need whatever we can get. And here we go, Puig for Talkman the Sockman. We got Clint Frazier and Jonathan Holder. Talk about a steal. The next one is Caratini. Jeremy Jeffers and Alec Mills for Henderson Alvarez. Really, I'm just trying to get as many players as I can get for just trading one away. This one required two players, but I'm okay with this. We're going to get Ryan Stanek, Eliezer Hernandez, and Harold Ramirez for Vicente Campos and David Hernandez. Devin Travis and a random player. I wonder if I can throw a little higher salary one in there. So Devin Travis and a random player for Daniel Polka. I'm going to give him a second chance. We'll see what happens. Jose Ramirez and Colin Poche. There we go. So after those moves, we we at least fill up the roster a little bit. And that's what I was really trying to do. That way we can at least have something to kind of build on. And we won't have to fill up too much. And I didn't want to trade. I guess I didn't trade Josh Fields away. That was really the only player that we didn't trade away. So we are going to need a lot of starting pitching. That's going to be a huge problem for us. But the bullpen, the bullpen's almost full. You know, you look at that and you go, okay, we can build around that. That's not a terrible bullpen to have. And then when you look at the lineup, you know, Harold Ramirez, Talkman, Jose Martinez, Daniel Polka, Caratini, Frazier. Are they the best? Definitely not. You know, hopefully some of these guys will pop off and actually be pretty good. But uh, we'll, we'll figure out what we can do. We'll see how it goes. And then we can just try to find a second baseman, third baseman, and shortstop. Which I feel like that's going to be pretty easy to find in free agency anyways. And there's a lot of glitchy players that we could pick up. So budget's a little bit of a mess. It says $1.45 million. We'll, we'll be pretty good after this season anyways. So here we go. Let's keep moving forward. I'll see you guys at the end of the season. We'll start season two. I'm surprised we won 10 games, to be honest. Whatever. We're, we're, we're not even going to worry about it. I'll take a look at some of the players that we did pick up. See how they did. Harold Ramirez. Okay. Talkman. Jose Martinez. Polka. Okay. You know what? Building blocks, right? Building blocks for sure. Eliezer Hernandez. I'm not going to take too much into consideration for these, these pitchers. But you know what? We have some, some stats to build off of. And for the most part, I'm pretty happy with how everybody performs. So I think we're pretty good going forward. So we'll just get into the offseason. Like I said, I'm not really worried about how the players did pitching-wise because a lot of them had to pitch with pretty bad players in the team. They really weren't getting run support. But I feel like we definitely have some players to build around. Every single person in our organization decided to retire that's going to be tough to manage that contract. Ooh, that is going to be a mess. So, exclusive negotiations. Jeremy Jeffers, how much do you want? Because we're we're kind of on a, a limited limited budget here. So, like, if you're cool with, like, taking quite a big pay cut, we could make it work. But otherwise, we're going to have to just move on from you and get somebody else. So, let's see. Did we get him? 
We did. Okay. So we need one bullpen arm. We need four starters. We need to fill out the entire organization. Like, who stuck around? We got a couple guys that were like, you know what? I'll give it another shot. But for the most part, we need a completely new farm system, MLB team. And let's just build from here. Let's see what we can do. And arbitration wise, I'm going to offer it to everybody. Like, we have a lot of money to spend. Like, we're going to look at the budget. It says 3.4. We have a lot. We have a lot to spend. And then. Like I said, contracts wise, we'll give it to everybody that's there as well. So let's just get into it. Free agency, I'm not gonna spend big. I'm gonna spend smart. So we're probably looking at players like Chase Anderson, maybe Desclafani, but more like low 70s, maybe some B potential players that are kind of glitchy. We gotta spend smart here. We have a lot of money that we're gonna have to spend. So I'll see you guys at the start of season two. So I was going through roster history and I was like, holy cow, this is a mess. I had to sign like a bajillion different players. So I figured, you know what, let's just not go through roster history let's just look at the roster because we could probably just go through what you know from top to bottom and it would really show you some of the best players that we have so jose martinez obviously was a trade last year adubi ramos rule five pick ronald torres rule five pick victor caratini a trade last year talkman trade last year domingo herman was a rule five pick and i know you're probably thinking whoa 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 off field issues i know i'm gonna trade him i don't want him on the team jonathan holder was a trade last year Bassett free agency, one year contract, just a placeholder. Alec Mills trade, Poche trade, Alemis Diaz, two year deal, two year deal, two and a half million. I thought it was a good, a good little snag. And then Marcana, we all know he's a glitch, decided to pick him up on a two year deal, one year deal, two year deal. So we got that. Ryan Stanek was a trade last year. Brett Anderson was contract it was a free agency two-year deal thought okay if you at least can do like a four or five spot we're good harold ramirez was a trade jermaine ramsey sitting in free agency i was like yes please future third baseman for us looks really good like that brian o'keefe uh rule no free agency free agency that's where we got him and then who else daniel mcgrath was also free agency decided to pick him up and then jajurka was free agency Abraham Blocker, we have these couple other players like Anth Am Amferny, I hate that name by the way, Amferny, Greer was a rule 5 pick that the CPU decided to get, and then we have a bunch of other just random free agents and stuff that I was able to kind of snag so that we could fill out the roster, so a lot was done, it took way too long, I also looked through like what else was available here. And realistically, it would probably just be Wilmer Defoe if I were to pick somebody up. I just don't really see any other player really helping us long term or even being worth trading. So I am going to change the team up a little bit because I do want to trade Erman. I like the bullpen. I think right now it's okay. We'll leave it there. Starting rotation, I think we're okay for now. And then the lineup. When you look at the lineup, it actually doesn't look bad. You know, you think of like Ramirez or Martinez, really glitchy player. Canna, glitchy. Sometimes Diaz as well. I'm going to leave it as is. I do want to trade Clint Frazier just because I wish I would stop like choking over my own tongue or something like that. Get my get my words out normally. Clint Frazier. I'm going to trade him. I just don't think he's going to be good. I feel like we can get some good something back in return. And I'm looking at the team. Where could we improve? Maybe third base. But then we have that uh, young guy. What's his name? Jermaine Ramsey who could just come up and be a third baseman so I'm trying to think of other places maybe a starting pitcher maybe try to get one of those so I'm gonna trade Armand Clint Frazier let's see what we can get Jose Rukidi and Chris Devensky for Domingo Armand and Mark Richards a new starting pitcher Devensky is gonna help out in the bullpen I'm gonna get rid of one of our aging relievers and we're gonna go from there all right we're kind of in need of a shortstop for the long term we're gonna trade for Tim Anderson really friendly contract saying around four million we're gonna trade Josh Fields Clint Frazier and Anthony Greer so after the move for Tim Anderson, this is what we're looking like. I like this team a lot. I mean, is it the best? No. But starting from zero to completely getting a new farm system to what we have now, this is a, this is a solid team. Our bench is pretty bad. I'll, uh, I'll definitely give you that one. But here we go. This is what we're rocking with with the starting rotation. This is the area I'm worried about the, the most because like the bullpen looks good. The starting rotation, we got some okay players. Rikidi, Hernandez, maybe Daniel Grath will be a little bit of an underrated player. Probably not, but we'll wait and see. But 
kind of like what we were able to do. Our budget is still pretty healthy, so we'll definitely be able to improve it as we go forward. But for now, let's just see how things kind of progress. We do have a couple young players like Encarnacion. We have this guy who I'm probably going to trade because he can't hit a baseball. And then we also have this Jermaine Ramsey. Who I'm definitely thinking about getting in at third base next year. I mean, Encarnacion might even be able to play first base for us next season, depending on how, how much Jose Martinez decreases. So here we go. I'm going to take you guys to the draft. If I get any good players, I'll let you know. Other than that, I'll see you guys at the end of the year. Season two, the draft actually went pretty good. We have quite a few like platoon players, but also a couple of good closers. And you're probably like, why, why go closer? We need pitching so De todd ogle 67 overall a potential really good per nines already you got jackie setting quest which what, what kind of name is that come on but again really good per nines already we got elton watt who's got some really good hitting stats so i'm thinking if he does feature probably like a, a bench bat for us cesar valdez really good hitter we have johnny gomez who's got really good power and then jerome holton and Dan Potts. So overall, really happy with the drafts for the first two seasons. Definitely could see some of these guys getting involved at one point. So hopefully, hopefully they grow really quickly because we're going to need the help. All right. So again, we're not a winning team, but progress was made. Progress was made. 71 and 91. Let's take a look and see where we finished in the standings. We were last. Uh, disappointing. But uh, wild card wise, we were 12 games out. So it wasn't like it was too far triples for tim anderson and we're, we're starting to uh we're starting to build a team i'm not even gonna look at league leaders i know not none of us are gonna be pretty high we got a gold glove but mvp was cody bellinger mike moustakis was in the mix as well okay david price and luis severino were cy young batting title went to trout and bellinger edgar santana and aroldis chapman kiriloff and dylan file rookie of the years let's take a look at our you know our pitching see how that went because that was where I was worried about the team the most. Alec Mills, like to see that, definitely do. Ryan Stanek, probably gonna trade him next year. This is what I was worried about when I traded for him. Unfortunately, didn't go as, you know, just didn't go that great. Jeremy Jeffers, gonna let him walk as well. Colin Poche, the ERA is high, but the whip's low, so I definitely could work with that. Chris Devensky, not terrible, not terrible, not terrible. And Uber Ramos, I need him to get that whip down. If he can get that whip down, we're set. And then Jonathan Holder is, is the man to, hold you know kind of close games hold games you know jose rikidi definitely not our ace but i can respect those numbers same with chris bassett eliezer hernandez the whip's kind of high Ugh, don't even want to talk about that one and brett anderson i mean the pitching staff definitely needs to be improved that's kind of our our weak link alemis diaz not a bad season at all 272 almost an 800 ops i will take that adam hall he's 56 can't really expect much um billy burns was a guy signed in free agency just to kind of fill out the rest of the the bench and then brian o'keefe was whatever um ronald torres as our second baseman you know it, it's it's okay you know definitely want to see a better leadoff hitter we'll definitely try to find one this offseason tim anderson that's a pretty good year. <laughs> I would say so myself. Oh, speaking of leadoff hitters, so many of you guys hated on me in the Braves rebuild about me putting Albies in the leadoff spot, even though I said he's not a leadoff hitter every single season. Well, you know what? That's just how the things went. All right. I mean, and Acuna is our best hitter. He's hitting close to 50 home runs a season. I'm not going to put him in the leadoff spot. I'm going to put him in the three or the four slot. All right. That's just how it goes. So here we go. We're back in this one. Jose Martinez, I think I'm going to bring him back for one more season. Just one more because those stats are just too good to pass up. We got Daniel Polka who, okay, you know what? Maybe I was proven wrong. Maybe I just need to get him in the lineup every single day to really pop off. Marcana's doing really good numbers as well. So love to see that. A 920 OPS. Okay. Harold Ramirez is probably a player I'm looking to trade. Just, he's decent, but he's got some value and I feel like we can get something in return for him. Victor Caratini, he's holding down the spot for catcher until we can find someone better. Uh, Talkman the Sockman, not as good as last year. Might need a new outfielder. And then we have Jed Jerko, who for a season, I'm okay with those numbers. And like I said, we've got guys coming up through the farm system. Jermaine Ramsey's taking over at third, 100% next season. And Antonio Encarnacion, no, his potential went down. No. Okay. He might actually, maybe we just throw him in the lineup season next season and then we maybe let Jose Martinez go actually or let Polka play in left. 
Jose Martinez is the DH and then Encarnacion starting there. So I don't think we have anybody here. Abraham Blocker, but he's definitely not ready. So pitching must, must improve, must improve. So here we go, heading into the offseason. What can we do? Braves win the World Series, of course. I couldn't do it, but of course they did there. So let's see how this goes. Everybody else retired as I expected. Exclusive negotiations. Brett Anderson. I'm going to accept this one. It was $2 million. It is nothing. Jeremy Jeffers, I'm going to decline. And then what was what did Jed Jerko want? Like $2 million? He'll probably be a bench bat. So I'm okay with that. And then Chris Devensky. We need the bullpen help, right? He doesn't want much. Let's do it. I mean, that's 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 like pennies compared to the rest of the stuff. So I'm going to do the staff and we'll get this offseason started. So looking at the contracts, I'm going to offer it to everybody. I'm going to trade Daniel McGrath next season, try to get a new starter. Arbit oh, wait, no, I think I did. Did I say arbitration there? Contracts, I'm going to offer it to everybody. I'm going to trade Daniel McGrath. And arbitration, this is what I'm rocking with. I offered everybody arbitration. We need to keep as many players in the team as possible. Looking at free agency now, if I could ever get there. There we go. That is not Clayton Kershaw. That is not Clayton Kershaw's picture. But um, what we'll do is... Let's take a look, see where we can improve the team. I did say I want to trade Harold Ramirez. Could bringing in myself be a possible answer? We'll, we'll wait and see on that one. Center field, we have Canna. That's fine. Left field, I think we have enough power. Shortstop, Tim Anderson's good. Third base, we're going to bring up Ramsey. As much as I think bringing in Chris Bryant would be great, let's just, let's just rock with Ramsey. Hopefully, that's good enough. Second base, Ronald Torres. Definitely could use an upgrade there. I wonder if... Could Ramsey play at second base? I got to check his secondary positions. But first base, I want to get Encarnacion and Jose Martinez rocking that spot. Catcher, we could use an upgrade, but I don't like those upgrades. And then this is the area I want to spend the most money. So maybe someone like a Kershaw or a Syndergaard might be the move. Someone like Steven Matz. Okay, maybe not Steven Matz, but I'm definitely spending some money in this area. I'll see you guys for season three. Hopefully we can at least make the playoffs. We're about to start the next season and the CPU went a little ham on rule five picks along with a couple other things. I may have picked up a couple too many players in free agency. I'll make a couple trades. I'm gonna pick up Alex Young from the Diamondbacks, a starting pitcher, small contract. We're gonna trade Her Harold Ramirez and Brett Anderson. I'm acquiring Dylan Floro for Ryan Stanek and Aledmus Diaz. That's a bullpen option that we definitely needed. I'm gonna acquire Rookie of the Year Dylan File, or he was Rookie of the Year last year in this save. He's always been really good against me. Let's see if he does well for us. Chris Bassett, Daniel McGrath, and Scotty Pinero is gonna make the trade. All right, so we're in season three, and we made a lot, of, a lot of changes. Obviously, we just did those trades, and then when we take a look at our budget, you guys will kind of see some of the some of the players we picked up. And then we're actually in a good spot heading, you know, kind of in the next season as well. Carlos Martinez is going to be the ace. We have Okiti, File, Alex Young, and Eliezer Hernandez. I like that starting five. It's young. It's going to develop. We should be fine. The bullpen definitely made some changes to it. Floro, Kimbrel, those are big pickups for us. We got a good setup, a good closer. The rest of the squad was actually pretty solid, so I'm pretty happy with it. And then we look at the lineups. Tim Anderson, Michael Conforto was brought in as a really good outfield bat for us. Jose Martinez, I'm going to give him one more season. Daniel Polka, Mark Canna. Seth Beer was a Rule 5 draft pick, and we all know he gets really good, so I decided to pick him up. Ronald Torres is still our second baseman for now. Not really too many options were available in free agency that I thought would be a good replacement. Victor Caratini and Jermaine Ramsey is now our third baseman. We have quite a few lefties in the lineup. I've noticed that, but we'll have to figure out what we can do to change that up. I'm going to give Encarnacion one more season to develop. I'm looking at his hitting stats. I don't think he's ready just yet, but I definitely think he will be the replacement at first base come next year. Talkman's on the bench with Jerko, Billy Burns, Brian O'Keefe, and a Rule 5 draft pick in Aramis Ademan. So he's really getting carried by his fielding stats, but he looks really good if it was like a long-term rebuild. This is the team, again, this is a team that's going to hit a lot of home runs. Conforto, Martinez, Polka, Canna, Beer. That's a, that's a strong middle part of the lineup. The pitching rotation is definitely improved. And I think we got this all from, what, a zero overall complete team. Like a zero overall team completely. My Major leagues, triple A, double A, single A. No player with any trade value. We're 24th in baseball still, which 
I don't see how we could be. I still feel like, I think we're underrated, I would go to say that. So if I'm looking at a player who I could potentially trade, I don't know. If I was looking at a player to trade, maybe Encarnacion, maybe. Um, we do have those two guys in the farm system as well, the, the, or actually three that are pitchers. We have Blocker, we have Ogle, who's got quite a few other pitchers around him. We have Ogle, who's 67. I think he's going to be a trade piece. I don't think he's going to be ready come next season. But we do have Senenquist, who potentially could be ready next year. We'll have to wait and see. That's the team. That's kind of the prospects to look forward to. I like the team. I'll see you guys at the end of the year. Okay, I'm so, so shocked. Like, didn't expect this at all. 92 and 70. Made the postseason as a wild card team. Taking on the Yankees, though. The Yankees were a bit of a, a bogey team for us. Obviously, they're better than us, so it makes sense. But we were only four games out in the division. So, you know, we're not we're not a bad team. We're not a bad team. We're definitely in the mix. And uh, let's let's see what we can do. Awards, Jermaine Ramsey was Rookie of the Year. And then gold gloves for Caratini and Torres. Domingo Santana was MVP. Okay. Cody Ballinger, Walker Bueller, and Garrett Cole, Cy Young. Reliever of the year was Pagan and Taylor Rogers. Jermaine Ramsey had himself a season. What a pickup he was in free agency. No league leaders, but it looks like Daniel Polka had quite a few home runs. So we'll take a look to see if any of our players are kind of sneaking up there in the ranks for anything. Just anything at all. And from what I'm seeing, it doesn't really look like it. We got Daniel Polka up there. RBIs for Daniel Polka. So maybe, maybe I was wrong about Daniel Polka. I picked him up in the Braves rebuild. He didn't do much for us, but it looks like he definitely can do something if you give him day-to-day -day play. So here we go. Carlos Martinez, fantastic season. I mean, just because he didn't have a lot of strikeouts, that's why he didn't win Cy Young. Jose Urquidy did really well. Dylan File did very well. Alex Young, not as good as I would have hoped. Hopefully he can turn that around next year. And Eliezer Hernandez, really good year. Low whips, that's what I'm liking from this rotation. Alex Young with the highest one at a 1.5, hoping we can get better. Alec Mills, the whip's a little high, but he had a pretty solid season. Colin Poche was really well, uh, really well, really good. Jonathan Holder, of course, is doing good numbers. Adubre Ramos, pretty solid. Devensky, so it's looking like 1.3 is where our bullpen sitting around for the whip. Dylan Floro, fantastic setup, man. And then Craig Kimbrell, really good season. Love to see it, 35 saves. So, pitching staff, we're fourth in baseball with our pitching staff. Makes sense. We had a really good year. We take a look at the lineup. Talkman, maybe he's just a bench guy. That's what we need him to do. Jajurko, 13 home runs off the bench. Billy Burns, okay. Brian O'Keefe, meh. And Aramis Ademan, meh. But let's take a look at the, the main part of the team. Tim Anderson is now our leadoff guy. 34 home runs. Gotta love it. 839 OPS. Michael Conforto had a bounce back season. Last year was pretty pretty abysmal i wouldn't say abysmal but it was a rough season for him definitely turned it around this year jose martinez in his last year did quite well daniel polka apparently knows how to hit a baseball and that's all he does well so somehow we got to get him into the team every single day mark canna still putting up really good numbers but i think we might need a new center fielder just based on the fact that he's a little bit older and he might start to fall off in rating seth beer quiet season for him hopefully he can have a bounce back year Ronald Torres, even though he's a gold glover, I definitely want to find a new second baseman. Victor Caratini probably should get a new catcher too. You know, even though he's putting up decent run production, it's just we, we need someone that can hit the ball. And Jermaine Ramsey, 21 doubles, 21 home runs, almost a 300 average and an 858 OPS. Fantastic season. So we're looking at our future first baseman in Antonio Encarnacion. So that's good. Outside of that though, not really seeing too much to get excited about. Let's take a look at the pitching. Blocker, definitely not going to feature. His per nines are just too low. Johnny Goody, doesn't look bad. Todd Ogle, look, those per nines aren't bad. The walks are a little low, but I think we might be able to work with that, maybe. Jackie Sedenquist, though, I, I think he needs to come in. Who does he replace in the bullpen, though? I don't think he does. Uh-oh. So maybe he's just a trade piece or something, but that's the team. Here we go. Wild card time. Can we win the game against the Yankees? I feel like if we can get past the Yankees, we're in a good spot to really make a push for the World Series. So here we go against Sevi. Speaking of Daniel Polka, the guy is unstoppable. Maybe maybe he's a glitch, and whoever told me that in the comment section, I I, I was wrong. I, I'll admit it. That guy's unbelievable, apparently. He's like just a home run hitter, and that's all he does. So I will 
try to pick him up more often i don't really know but the guy's insane we're up three to three to one and so far i'm liking what i'm seeing i'm liking it a lot so if we can score maybe another one or two runs i'd be really happy with that but if we can do it here that'd be great conforto keep the inning alive he doesn't we're gonna take out martinez we're gonna go to holder he's been really really co like consistent for us very reliable and if we can get one more run i'll feel super comfortable heading into the eighth inning Bases loaded for Torres. One run scores. Okay, I'll take that, even though one was thrown out going home. We end up getting that run, and it is five to one. Let's take out him. Let's go Floro. That's tough. It's not Floro's day. It's not Floro's day. Whose is it? Davinsky? Bases loaded for Ozuna. Tie ball game. Are you kidding me? The two guys in the bullpen who were the most reliable in Floro and Davinsky throw it away? Are you serious? We get that run, though. We take the lead. That was big. Please. Please, Kimbrell. Shut the door. Please don't mess this up. Bases are loaded for Mike Ford. I need you here. He gets us out of it. We're taking on the Indians. Okay. Whew. Talk about a bit of a scare. Jeez. Alrighty. So, let's go. Let's go like that. Like, Alex Young is good, but maybe, maybe he's just not ready just yet. So, game one, we lose. Game two, we lose. And then game three, we get swept. And I maybe should have played that, but we're going to give it a one more season. See how it goes. Let's head to the offseason. And maybe I thought the Yankees, maybe I just overestimated the Yankees and the Dodgers defeat the Angels. So we definitely need to turn things around. I wouldn't say turn things around. We're headed in the right direction. And I feel like we just need to add a couple pieces to really strengthen this team. Exclusive negotiations, Tim Anderson. Let's do it. Let's bring him back. Like, he's been phenomenal for us. Why Why wouldn't we want to bring him back? And then, if I don't see anybody else that I like that plays center field, I'll bring back Canna. But for now, I'm going to let those three walk. I'm going to do the staff. I'll be right back. Contracts-wise, I'm going to give it to everybody. Everyone's most likely going to be on the AAA team or the MLB level. Arbitration, I decided against Torres, Talkman, and Billy Burns. And then everybody else is going to get arbitration there. So contracts i've already talked about free agency i don't really want to spend big on pitching i feel like pitching wise we were really good maybe maybe trade for a little bit better of an arm but i'm looking at catchers i would love to get a better catcher i think that would definitely help us out wilson's gonna cost a lot same with gary sanchez and they haven't really done amazingly like these two years for gary were great but then he's kind of fallen off so am i gonna get good gary or bad gary first base we're set we're gonna have um, Incarnacion. Second base, I definitely want to improve. Rugnet Odor, not really the guy I'm looking for. Maybe Adam Frazier. He's kind of fallen off too. Jose Peraza, we gotta find us. We gotta find a second baseman. That's that's really what we're lacking is a second baseman. I guess we could move maybe Jose Ramirez there. That might be an option. And then a center fielder, Cattell Marte. Okay. If we can figure out a way to make all this work within our budget, it's really tight, but I think we might be able to make something work here. I'll see you guys for the final season. Final season, and I'm thinking I need to bring back a guy that is going to bring a little bit more pop to the lineup because I'm looking at the lineup. We're very lefty heavy. I'm talking like more lefties than there should be, and I feel like we could definitely use a person that I'm thinking about. So when we take a look at the team starting five looks good like i'm looking at this i go i have confidence in this rotation i look at the bullpen i say for the most part i have confidence in this bullpen as well it's just the thing that's like i know someone's gonna just implode and is gonna suck so i don't really know who it's gonna be but one of these guys is gonna be bad so who I, it's just whatever who it's a guess as you can see, we do have a couple new center fielders. Randy Arizarena, a potential out of nowhere. So I decided to pick him up in free agency. He was sitting there, decided to give him a shot. And then a rule five pick in Brandon Davis. This was more of like a, hey, he could be a really good trade piece or we keep him, kind of be a platoon guy, who knows. As you can see, Mark is not there. And that's the guy I'm thinking of bringing back because we definitely need some righty pop in the lineup. When you look at this, Antonio Encarnacion's a lefty. So we lost Jose Martinez, we brought in another lefty. We have Caratini still, I might trade him, get a new catcher, but this is kind of the team. I moved Tim Anderson to second base, that's why his rating is jumping up so high. And then shortstop, Orlando Arcia, who I've seen him do really well, and then I've seen him kind of do this. So maybe this is the season he breaks out, but as a shortstop, not terrible, not terrible. So this is the team. I'm thinking about getting a new catcher, just a righty catcher that's just gonna destroy the ball. I think that's gonna help us in the lineup. 
and then I think I'm gonna leave the pitching alone because for the most part the pitching has been really really good I just feel like we could do a little bit more offensively I thought about bringing Mark Canna back but at the same time I feel like I use him so often it might be nice to try out new players so let's get a new catcher someone that's really gonna help the team are right, we gonna get Mitch Garver just straight up Mitch Garver Victor Caratini that's the move both of them become free agents at the end of the year I believe but that, that actually brings a little bit more pop to the lineup that adds someone that we can use in the five spot in the rotation as, or in the, in the rotation, in the lineup as well, which I felt like we, we kind of needed that extra bat that we could use. So now I can kind of go like, like this, put Mitch there. And that I feel like really strengthens the lineup. So this is the team for the final season. I have so much confidence in this. We're trying out a lot of new players as well in the zero overall rebuild. I could have gone out and gotten, you know, the, the typical players that I get, Aaron Bummer, who else, Marcus Semien at short or someone like that, George Springer in center, just, you know, kind of the typical players that I would go after, but I feel like we use a lot of new ones. Martinez, I don't use often, Rikidi, File, Young, Hernandez. I know Alec Mills is one of my favorites now, but long relievers are kind of difficult to work with. Poche, Holder, a couple new names in the bullpen, Kimbrel as well. And then when you look at the lineup, there's, you know, I don't most of these guys I don't really get so this is kind of something that's completely new I'm still unsure about center field but I think I'm gonna rock with it let's take a look and see where we're ranked as a team number 10 let's see how it goes I see you guys at the end of the season all right so this might be the most winning season we've had hopefully as I say that we start to go on a little bit of a losing streak at the beginning of the month but it looks like we're about to hit what 90 90 ish wins 93 94 maybe if we can maybe win a couple more we might not make the postseason we did we won the division actually 96 and 66 i was kind of worried that we weren't going to make the postseason just because you know 96 wins just doesn't feel like it'd be good enough in the east but it turns out it is we're ranked 14th so it just turns out that we kind of had those glitchy players that really do well so we're taking a look at league leaders and from what i'm seeing not a lot of our players are up there in anything daniel polka again though with the home runs and rbi so maybe i was wrong about that it turns out he's just a home run machine like that's that's insane i didn't expect that at all i was completely wrong about him and then taking a look at wins we got dylan file up there that's good to see losses eliezer hernandez dylan file saves can craig kimbrell's up there perfect love to see that awards wise Bunch of gold gloves, bunch of gold gloves. So Jordan and Pete Alonso. Cy Young was Walker Bueller and Shane Bieber. Jose Altuve and Soto. We got Will Smith and Liam Hendricks. Parker Meadows and Spencer Howard. So, okay. All right, some interesting names there. So let's take a look and see how the bullpen did. Alec Mills had his worst season so far. Colin Poche, really good year. I'm, I'm down with that low whip. He's been really good for us throughout the entire time. Pretty happy with that. Jonathan Holder. Worst season, but still the whip was pretty low. So, I mean, I can work with that. And Ruby Ramos had his best year. The whip's down. The ERA's at a good point. Love to see it. Chris Devensky, for a guy who was sitting around like the high 70s, just cracked the 80 mark for the first time. He's been really good for us. Dylan Floro, of course, kind of like a, a throwback to one of my favorite relievers to pick up. Really solid season. And then Craig Kimbrell. Yeah, he blew 10 saves, but he was still really good for us. Looking at our starting rotation, Carlos Martinez still putting up a really good season. Jose Urquidy did as well, keeping the ERA at a good point. And the whip, Dylan File, is unbelievable. Not too sure why the potential has gone down because he had his best year easily a Cy Young candidate with those numbers. Same with Alex Young, a player who struggled last year, came back and put up crazy good numbers. And then, of course, Eliezer Hernandez. These three guys right here, def like even, I mean, all these guys, really strong rotation really happy with the players we we picked randy Arena actually was kind of nice 300 at bats but like really that's a pretty good season i let miss diaz solid little bench bat and the rest of the guys were as well tim anderson 266 so the average dipped a little bit so did the ops but he he's kind of a leadoff guy i just need him to get on base and the on base percentage is at 304 so that is a little low as well orlando arcia 220 i decided to bump him up a little bit in the lineup I need better. I probably would trade him going forward. Michael Conforto, 31 home runs, 85 RBIs, really solid season, almost a 900 OPS. Daniel Polka almost hit 50 home runs. So, guys, I was wrong. You guys were right. I mean, I guess I got to trust you more often and 
this guy's unbelievable who would have thought a guy with 32 vision is gonna be knocking 60 home like 50 home runs almost every single season unbelievable mitch garver hmm that's basically victor caratini numbers could have kept him seth beer hit 20-ish home runs 24 okay okay jermaine ramsey not as good as he was last year but pretty similar numbers so I'm okay with that. Antonio Encarnacion, first year rookie season, 20 home runs, 30 doubles, 18 stolen bases. I mean, that's a good season. I'll take that. It's only going to get better from here. And then Brendan Davis struggled a bit. I might go a Razor Reina for the rest of the season, just so that we can have someone that is a little bit better, just a little bit better. So that's the team. I'm kind of, ooh, I almost uh, did something I didn't want to do. So. There we go. Blockers up to a 75. Probably still needs another season in the minors. And then we'll take a look at Gutu. Was a season one pick. He's up to a 69. And then Ogle's up to a 71. So these two guys probably a couple seasons away. And then same with Sending Quest. I'd definitely call him up next year. He's definitely coming up. Probably we would replace Stavinsky. Because you look at our budget. It was very tight. We were sitting around 700,000. And players like Diaz can go. Garver can go. Davinsky. Eliezer Hernandez, I would bring back. Floro, you could let walk if you wanted to. Um, yeah, the team, you definitely could make a way to work with the budget. So here we go. Postseason time against the Athletics. And, of course, we're facing elimination. Why can't we just ever just sweep? We don't sweep anymore. We don't, we don't win games easily. We got to make series way too difficult. And I can't stand it. So here we go. Let's see what we can do against the Athletics. They have Madrigal, Cattell Marte, Wilson Ramos, Eddie Rosario. What about, look at this team. This is like a completely different team. And the thing is like, I tried to get Cattell Marte this past off season and I couldn't do it. It was just a little bit too expensive. Didn't score there, that's tough. Man, that was Randy Arozarena coming up with a two run home run, okay. I was gonna say that was tough that we didn't score in that situation, but I mean, we're scoring anyways. Mitch Garver's getting triples. I don't know what's going on anymore like this is insane matt chapman goes deep makes it a four to one ball game and so far i'm liking what i'm seeing alex young's pitching really well if he gets another okay i'm gonna leave it at there seven i was gonna say if he lets another runner on i'm gonna take him out but he didn't we're in a good spot and let's take him out here let's go to our setup guy floro hopefully he goes one two three okay a single it's fine he goes one two four i guess you know <laughs> and then i left floro in on accident it is doesn't matter it worked for us, and we're now going to the elimination game. Who do we have on the mound? Probably could go Carlos Martinez. Yeah, let's go Carlos Martinez, and then I guess we could go Elias or Hernandez to start the next one. We'll see how this goes. I mean, we gotta win first, so I guess I can't. I guess I can't start thinking of the next series because I'm already losing one nothing. We gotta change this. We can't. No, 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 no. Not, not. We're not doing this today. Alec Mills is gonna come in, man. Um, I might, I might go to Hernandez because we need, we need runs fast. Jermaine Ramsey brings us back into it. If Mills starts struggling, I'm gonna take him out, and we're gonna go Hernandez for sure. And hopefully he can just, we can get back in the game offensively, and maybe things will change because we're we're in trouble right now. We're down six. We don't have many innings left, many chances to bring this back, and we're we're facing a little bit of. A little bit of a time crunch we got two innings left that's game that's that's the nail in the coffin unless we just go off this inning which it's possible daniel polka i can't believe it really i i gave faith in my ace again i feel like my ace always lets me down in elimination games and that's it we lose and we're eliminated that's tough i felt like this team was really good could we have used a better center fielder? Probably. Could we have used a better catcher? I guess. Pitching staff was good throughout this entire thing as well. So, except for whatever that is. That is terrible. I guess I should have had more faith in Young and Hernandez throughout this entire thing. I don't know. Something just... We missed... We, I think we just missed, like, just one, one player that would have sent us over... You know sent us into that next elite level because we were good but i guess we could have done a little bit more but um budget wise picking the orioles makes things a little bit more difficult their budget isn't as big as other teams and it was a little bit of a challenge remember we started from a team that had no trade value at all completely zero overall 
and the fact that we actually made the postseason in two of the four years is mind blowing. So I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Again, guys, hit that like button down below. As I'm doing this, 60% of you are still not subscribed. Subscribe now. Hit that red, that red button down there. Hit it. And as always, guys, get in the comment section. Like I said, I want you guys to tell me your crazy rebuild ideas, your rebuild challenges that are really going to challenge me in the future. If I like the idea, I'll do it for a future video. That's about it, guys. I'm going to leave two videos for you to check out, my most recent one and also one that YouTube recommends you watch. So if you haven't seen either of them, go and give them a watch. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.